good morning, everyone. We are going to get started. Um, my name is Dr. Wood, and I am a literacy faculty member in the School of Education and have the honor to serve as the chair of the Virginia Hansen Committee. And on behalf of the Virginia Hansen Committee, the School of Education, Arts Equals Opportunity, and the San Marcos Writing Project, I'd like to welcome you to our event today, Integrating STEAM into Virtual and In-Person Learning with the amazing Christine Dixon, Innovation Coordinator and TOSA at Double Peak School. Um, first, I would like to take a moment to tell you about today's event sponsors. This is Virginia Hansen, and Virginia Hansen dedicated her life to being the best teacher possible for the children in her care. As a cooperating teacher, she helped numerous student teachers hone their skills. And in 1998, the Virginia Hansen Endowment Fund was established in the CSUSM School of Education through the generosity of Mr. Victor Hansen. It's intended to honor the work and memory of his wife, Virginia. The CSUSM School of Education uses part of the endowment funds for materials in the CSUSM Hansen Library located on the fifth floor and sponsors the Virginia Hansen speaker events. Over the years, speakers have provided innovative practices for current and future teachers. In this way, the Hansen family is assured that Virginia's legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of teachers in San Diego and beyond. The 2021 speaker series is dedicated to Virginia and all the teachers like you who devote their career to engaging, empowering and enriching their students. Our second sponsor for today is Art Equals Opportunity, led by the amazing and talented Dr. Goldberg and she is here today. Um, Art Opportunity is a research-based movement that provides leadership training, literacy residencies, summits, workshops, arts integration boot camps, and special events for educators, parents, youth, and teens, and art providers. Art Equals Opportunity focuses on providing access to the arts for all children through exemplary educational practices based in arts integration and arts education. To learn more, um, please explore their website, feel free to use their tools, and follow Art Equals Opportunity on social media to stay connected regarding the upcoming events. You may also find recordings of the past speaker series events that we have hosted on that website. And then finally, our third sponsor today is the San Marcos Writing Project, led by uh, the Director of the School of Education, Dr. Stoll. The San Marcos Writing Project is one of the um, 190 sites of the National Writing Project, 17 of which are in California. This is a professional development network of teachers whose goals is to improve student writing achievement. The writing project is a valuable resource for teachers in schools um, and information about the writing project can be found on the CSUSM SOE website. And if you are interested, there is a summer institute that will be happening soon. So if you are interested, please um, go check that out on the website. Before you leave today, um, we would love to hear from you. I have a Qualtrics survey that will just take about 10 seconds to fill out. So we would really appreciate your feedback about today's event. Um, and then without further ado, um, today I am so excited that I have the honor to introduce to you the amazing and inspiring educator, Christine Dixon. I met Christine a few years ago um, I have been intrigued by her creativity, knowledge, skill, and passion. I've had the opportunity to visit her makerspace firsthand and watch her in action, teaching even her youngest students with STEAM integration. I've observed Christine bring less learning to life for kids, giving them opportunities they would other not, otherwise not have, and learn what an amazing father looks like and sounds like. So I'm so humbled and grateful that Christina is here today to share her knowledge and practice with you so you can bring the excitement of STEAM integration into your teaching. I also want to give a shout out to all of you, the audience, for coming on Saturday morning to continue learning through this extraordinary professional development. 
Before I turn it over to Christine, though, I would like to extend a, a well-deserved and huge congratulations to Christine and her colleague Marla. Um, this morning, they were recognized for their, st their STEM collaborations. These are two educators who share, share, share all of their creations. Um, and so I am so proud of to know them both um, and, and to just be part of, of their community. Um, they were recognized by the Southern California Professional Development Federation. So I just wanna say it is um, my distinct honor to introduce you to Christine Dixon. Thank you so much. Um, let me first double check, uh, Dr. Wood, can you let me know if the sound, uh, I have two different options and I didn't have time to test it. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Loud and clear? Okay, awesome. Thank you so much um, for everyone being here. Um, it is a precious Saturday morning and I want to um, thank you for being here. Um, and I want to assure you that um, it's from 10 to 12, but I'm gonna break it up with, actually, let me uh, share my screen first so I can tell you how uh, this is going to go. And I think that um, hopefully it will be very beneficial for you. That's my goal. Um, but thank you, Dr. Wood, and thank you, um, Meryl Goldberg and everyone for having me. This has been my privilege to, I've now done it, has it been three times or two times? Three times that I've um, presented and it has just been such an honor. Um, I love, you're gonna learn, I love collaborating, I love sharing um, and I love spreading innovation everywhere I go. So um, it's a privilege to be able to be with, what are we at, 169 of you, oh my goodness, that is so amazing. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and uh, start sharing my screen. I do have two screens up, um, so let me um, do this quickly here, because I wanna see you as well. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. So um, I, I want you to uh, note that I have changed the title a little bit. Um, because things have changed for me. And I also um, was very excited to Dr. Wood sent me the spreadsheet um, of attendees because it's really important for me to see my, uh, to know my audience. Um, and um, it was really cool to see, um, you know, where a lot of different um, areas that you all are at. Um, a lot of you are at Cal State San Marcos, so you'll know where Double Peak is right up above. Um, we have some teachers um, and um, we just, uh, we have a diverse uh, group of attendees. Um, and, and with that said, there's also, um, everyone is at different places right now during this whole education, um, uh, virtual hybrid or in-person learning. So um, I, I have gone through at, um, all of that um, this last year and to my student teachers out there, um, I give you major props for um, being out there learning education and everything and the classroom experience virtually and then some of you have gone to hybrid. So I really wanted to uh, make sure that I reached all of you. So I changed the title a little bit. Um, and then I also want to, um, to let you know that um, how I have this um, laid out. Um, from, probably from 10 to 11, it's not gonna be exact. I'm gonna be um, kind of sharing and, and hopefully we'll be learning. And then the last part of it is um, I wanted it to be like a workshop for you to create and curate. Um, I'm going to give you a lot of resources, um, a lot, a lot, a lot um, that you'll, you can spend time looking at and seeing if you um, want to um, curate those for your own teaching or your own areas, um, um, or even if you're not even teaching yet, you know, save those copies so they are ready for you. So um, I just want you to know that as I am going through this, don't worry about, um, you're going to have the presentation and everything. In fact, um, the presentation is down there. Um, it's um, down here. The bit.ly is integrating Steam. Um, and um, so you can follow along with me um, and you'll definitely want to grab that because like I said, I have lots of resources on there. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to actually put that in the chat because I'm going to go ahead and I did put that on all. Okay. 
and let me know if you have any issues. I believe I checked the link um, the bit.ly, okay? All right, let's get started. All right, um, this is going to be the, and uh, Dr. Wood, um, please, as always, interrupt me at any time. Um, I'm definitely not looking at the chat. Um, so I'm gonna pause or just you interrupt me. And please feel free to use the chat um, as I'm going. If you have questions and everything, Dr. Wood is um, my um, superstar there. She, she will help monitor that, okay? All right, thank you for letting me know, Lauren. The link is good, okay. All right, so uh, we're gonna do a little introduction first. Um, then we're gonna go through a lesson share. Like I said, I am going to share so much with you. Just a little background. Um, I, um, I am very passionate about sharing everything. So um, it, with, you know, there's things like teachers pay teachers and stuff like that, where you can like pay for lessons and everything. I am very passionate about um, what I create and then the things I create with my colleague, um, Marla, that um, we um, just um, got an award. Um, we share within our district and we think, why not share with everybody? So um, we do a lot um, sh of sharing on social media and everything so that we can um, share everything. So just know that I'm going to be giving you a lot of information, a lot of share um, so don't worry about grabbing all those yet um, at the workshop time. You can um, go through and see what is good for you or your area, okay? They do a little, a tiny bit of innovation, organization, and celebration, um, how I did that during uh, virtual teaching. And then um, I'm going to share some of my STEAM resources, where my go-tos are, and then we'll definitely have some question and answers as long as well as um, as we're going. Don't worry about saving your question till the end. I would like it to be interactive. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let me introduce myself um, a little bit more. Um, Dr. Wood did a very good job. Thank you. She's so I, she's like my cheerleader, and I love it. Um, she. Um, she has been to, I'm sad because she hasn't been, been able to be at Double Peak for this last year, but she would be able to come in and pop in um, to our innovation lab and maker space. And it was so cool for, you know, when you're doing something really cool and you would love for someone to see it because you see the learning and you see the kids and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish there was a fly on the wall. Well, she sometimes is my fly on the wall. So um, I just uh, love and value her, but um these are all um, places where you can um, follow me and um, I continue to share. I always will. Um, so I started um, over this, this last summer, um, I started uh, my little Weebly um, blog. It's not really a blog. I call it a, a dump of ideas because um, I, I don't really have time to like write uh, too much, but I just quickly um, dump my lessons and ideas on there for any teachers that are interested. Um, and so a lot of these links will link back to there. Okay. And that um, is a place where you can, during our workshop time, you can check that out. Um, on Twitter, um, that is my handle there. Instagram, um, both of those are, if you're interested in STEM and STEAM and, um, you know, my sharing of resources, I share everything on there. So if you follow me there, um, you will uh, miss out on uh, the stuff that we share. And then um, this is my um, email there. Okay, but I am the innovation uh, TOSA at double peak K TK through eight. Um, we um, were open, we opened in August of 2016. I still consider we're, even though it's five years in, um, I still consider it, it's, it's almost a new school. I was able to build that, um, uh, start a new school, which is um, such a privilege and I'll always cherish that. Um, and um, I also got to, I worked at the district as an innovation or as a um, ed tech TOSA and TOSA means teacher on special assignment. Um, and I was able to, before Double Peak was open, um, I was able to uh, go around and uh, check out other schools in the county um, and see their maker spaces and what they did for STEAM and STEM. And so um, I was able to really, you know, build the innovation program um, that I did. Um, and um, it's, it was such an, an honor and privilege. Um, it's pretty cool that I could build it on my own and I didn't have anyone telling me, um, like the district and everything didn't tell me how to do it. I got to do it on my own. So um, 
what um, a big part of our program is and our kind of vision kind of vision is um, students will be innovators who utilize design thinking to produce creative solutions to complex challenges. And the big rocks of our innovation program and this presentation and what I do are engineering, design thinking, um, and in our innovation spaces, we have our makerspace and innovation lab, computer science and technology, okay? So um, I wanted to show you um, a quick little video here um, of what our program, if you were to be a fly on our wall, like this was just one little video I did um, before um, COVID hit and we had to really pivot. Um, but I wanna show you how it was because it kind of um, made my going to virtual um, innovation um, so important on how I can continue this innovation. So um, I'll go ahead and play this uh, video here. Let me know if you can't hear the sound. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, that video actually makes me a little sad, um, but motivated. Sad because that collaboration and the students together and them creating is such a huge part of my belief in um, how we should teach students. And um, because everything that's been thrown at us, um, it, it can't be that way, but um, it made me so motivated to figure out a way on how to continue that. And then, um, so I'm gonna show you this next part here. Go here. Um, so in March, when last March, when we um, had to um, immediately go remote, um, I had um, a good five, four years of this program that was just incredible. We actually had um, about, within the, the four years, we had about 80, uh, tours, uh, school tours, like um, educators um, from schools, even districts would come and visit our makerspace and innovation lab. Um, and um, it was so exciting um, of all the things that we did. And then instantly, you know, we had to go remote. So um, I consider this presentation and what I share with you kind of my journey. Um, and also um, through it all is this um, idea right here that it's not about the space. Like, our makerspace, amazing. Our innovation lab, amazing. But it's not just about the space. It's really the, the maker mindset and the innovator mindset that I had to remind myself that I've always said that, that it's not about that. You know, It's about making sure that all of these, um, these ideas are within your teaching. Um, so, you know, um, design thinking and asking question and perseverance and engineering and taking risks, all of that was super important. And so um, when I had to go remote, um, a lot of the lessons I share with you are things that I did so that students could be successful virtually um, and um, at their homes. Um, and so um, and this, I actually, this gives you a sneak peek of what what it looks like right now at my house. I have my, my husband was, was like, what are you doing to our TV? But, <laughs> but this is, you know, how I had my setup, you know, last March um, to zoom in with my students and everything like that. And I'm sure a lot of you have similar experiences on getting your home all set up for, um, for Zoom if you're a student teacher or if you're a teacher. So, um, so I'm going to go. Um. Okay, fast forward. Um, and first of all, I think I'm good on the chat. Dr. Wood, are we good? Okay, awesome. All right, I want to um, fast forward um, to um, as I gradually moved 
from completely remote. San Marcos um, went gradually, baby steps um, in November. We um, had K1 and then we went to 2-3. Then we had to stop hybrid and we had to go back to remote because we had a lot of cases. And then um, starting after um, winter break in um, February, um, we were able to come back hybrid. And we are a TK through eight um, and I do a lot. So if I, have a, I saw some middle school single subject um, credentials, just know that um, I do a lot with our sixth, seventh and eighth grade as far as STEM and STEAM. But during this time, um, because of everything, I, I am focusing mainly on TK through five, but I do have a lot to share for you as well. Um, but um, I then, um, so all of these links, I'm not gonna spend time uh, clicking on these, um, but they link to my, um, my Instagram and they're kind of some fun videos that I uh, made on Reels, um, but it shows my process of, okay, now they can come back, but they can't share supplies. They can't, so this is a maker cart that I made. Um, they, they can't collaborate, um, but they, yet they can. They just can't be together. So it's my process of figuring out how to do this new innovation in a different way, okay? And um, so um, definitely when it's workshop time, um, I highly suggest you checking these out because they're, um, it, it's, it's a process like this one right here um, is showing, so you saw in the video that we were doing a lot of robotics where they're all together and they're collaborating. And then, so when I was thinking about how I'm going to have my students in the makerspace six feet apart, how am I gonna do this and have them continue this computer science background that they started in kindergarten, um, I made this idea that um, they, are, they individually have pieces of a big puzzle. So it's actually a robot re relay race where they have to master their own track and then we can bring them all together and it's a relay race and they're in charge of each part of it. So um, that is just kind of my brainstorm of, um, of how to shift um, from um, or reinventing our program. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go over some of the lessons that we did. Um, uh, if I say we, um, when I say we, it's because um, my colleague Marla Rosenthal, who is at Discovery Elementary, some of you may know that where that is, um, it's right um, it's closer to, to Cal State San Marcos than Double Peak, but it's, um, well, actually, it's probably the same. But um, she is at a K-5 um, elementary school, and she is an innovation TOSA similar to me. And so when it was time to go remote, we both, we never really share, um, did similar lessons. We just did our own thing, and we came together, and we became this strong, you know, tight team of, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to create these awesome lessons, we're going to share it with our district and beyond because our students are used to what they are used to and they are used to an amazing innovation program. So what are we going to do? So um, the first thing we did in March um, was, oh wait, is it blurry? I see that it's blurry. Is it blurry, Dr. Wood? Um, it's not for me, but some people are saying it is, so. Okay, um, so just, um, can we put the, okay. Um, we, you can also follow along with me with the bit.ly as well. Okay. All right. But please interrupt me if you need to. Um, so this is um, in March, uh, we designed these um, remote learning steam challenges. Um, so all of these are linked. So I'm just going to click on the first one here. And this is um, Every page has, uh, it starts with literacy um, or literature. Uh, most of them are. So there's a read aloud. And then we have um, each page has um, a different focus. So obviously S is science. So there's some hands-on activities. There's technology activities. And so we created these engineering, arts, math. We created these uh, for our students um, so that they could um, continue the innovation. And we have all these themes. This is what we first put out in March of last year. Um, so there's Earth Day, which we just celebrated um, last week, um, which um, we, we brought back for our students because um, the, it was just, there's so many fun resources here. So um, those are there um, to um, check out. Um, if you are 
um, a fourth grade um, student teacher or teacher, um, or maybe want to teach, uh, there's a national parks um, that is uh, pretty cool, especially because they couldn't at the time go to national parks. So we tried to make it virtual and so they could um, go on uh, virtual field trips. Um, and then there's an out of this world um, space um, steam challenge. So that was just one of our first things that we did um, for our distance learning steam. After um, that, actually in, uh, yes, in the before summer, um, after we had done all those um, and we were in uh, kind of our uh, COVID triage of uh, teaching back then, um, our district actually, um, were, they came to us and said, uh, we want you to um, continue this and creating these things um, for the entire district, which was such a cool opportunity for us because innovation was happening just at our two schools, but now we can, we can spread this innovation for all the schools. And most importantly, what that I loved so much is that it was taking the burden from other teachers um, or from classroom teachers. So it's literally, we call it take and teach. Um, we don't just give the preview copy um, or the PDF. Uh, we give them the copy so that they can take it and they can add their own Bitmoji because the students at that time, they, we were using lots of Bitmoji classrooms and everything like that. And the students um, really liked that. So um, what we did, um, we hit the ground running in August of this last year, and each of our um, units, um, we would have something called um, Benchmark uh, Universe, this is our ELA curriculum, um, and we would um, have uh, maker spaces that we would create, and then we, um, so these are the maker spaces, and then we have in, um, in integrated innovation lessons. Um, so if you click on this link, this will show you um, the different virtual maker spaces we have. And this goes to that blog I was telling you about, or also called Idea Dump, okay? Um, but then we also, um, actually, let me click on this one here so you can see a virtual maker space, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so these virtual maker spaces, uh, we have linked. Um, it takes a, little, a second to load because there's so much in there, but everything, it's kind of like a scavenger hunt for students. So this was a K-1 example. And so um, everything they click on, it links to a video or an activity or a read aloud, um, even the items in the room. Um, and those became really popular um, with our um, students. They loved those. And it was very integrated with what the teachers were teaching um, virtually um, in their class. Um, so that was really important. And we did it for each grade level. Um, and so this was unit one for benchmark is uh, government and citizenship. And then there's integration of innovation. So this is teaching. Um, so kinder and first was uh, digital books with write readers. So it teaches them how to be authors using an amazing program called write reader. If you, uh, during workshop time, if you click on that, um, you'll see that um, the video instruction, even if you as a teacher don't know Write Reader, it gets you all set up and students. Um, and then uh, this teaches second and third graders how to create a good Google slide presentation and fourth and fifth grade how to um, create infographics. So that's kind of how we started. That was unit one. Um, the response from teachers and students were, um, was so good. And also we shared it with um, educators um, besides our district. And so we got really excited about making these. Um, and so um, unit two is on characters. Um, so um, if you um, click on those, you can see the different maker spaces. Um, again, you can make a copy of it and modify it. So even if it's not necessarily, um, you know, second and third, and, or you don't have the ELA benchmark, you can modify it. You can use it as a template and change it up. So um, those are our virtual maker spaces. Um, we wanted to continue our design thinking um, as far as um, teaching them the design thinking process. Um, which is tough virtually, um, but um, I think these step-by-step, -step, if you look at these, if you're interested in that, um, you, um, I think we, we did an okay job as far as trying to get design thinking at home. Um, but what's cool is, I'm very excited about the fact that now that this work is done, even if we're hybrid and hopefully going uh, uh, in-person um, full-time, 
we can still use these um, these lessons and you can modify them. So where no matter where you're at, um, they um, hopefully will be helpful. All right, how we doing Dr. Wood as I take a sip of coffee? Yes, we're doing great. Um, there's nothing in the chat quite yet. Okay. I do uh, admittedly talk really fast and I'm high energy. So just remember you have this workshop time to go back and please, please, please use the chat if you have questions or you need me to, you know, slow down or anything like that. Um, and I'm definitely, um, I'm good with feedback. All right, one of my favorite was um, unit three, which is life sciences. Um, so these are virtual uh, maker spaces. Um, we're, again, if you don't have benchmark, even if you are just teaching life science, you can modify these. So let's see, here is, um, this one was life below water. And it gets noisy in a second, hold on. I'm just gonna pause this. This is an aquarium um, here that um, has noise, but um, this room has everything. Like I said, you hover over it and it goes to something um, related to habitats and adaptations. There's some design challenges. There's even um, th this right here goes to some fun um, cardboard uh, maker art activities. Um, so um, just continuing to make those virtual maker spaces since we had to be virtual. And again, if you are in person or next year when you get a teaching position, this is still something you could, this is a ready to go center. So, you know, if you need something and you're doing this, you know, this is your topic. Um, this is so much um, read alouds and everything here that you could use as a um, independent center. So. Um, each those are for each of the grade levels. I'm not going to click on all of those. Um, this is um, the innovation activities we did here. Um, renewable energy was fourth and fifth grade. So they were, um, I have to remind myself, what is this one? This lesson. Okay, so this one is creating an infographic and commercial. Um, so they had to um, learn about the different um, types and then um, there's some research involved. So that's um, similar to these two as well. Okay. Um, I didn't skip unit four, we did something different and I'm gonna get to that. But unit five was technology, obviously my favorite, even though I love the life sciences. Um, this was um, where this one, we kind of learned from our virtual maker spaces. So I'm going to show you how we modified this and I definitely like this design um, a little bit better. Um, so this actually um, is the choice board um, and I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about choice boards in, uh, in a bit that I'm passionate about. Um, but um, we wanted to give different choices. So there's some watch um, activities. So there's YouTube um, links um, embedded um, in the slide deck. Um, because uh, we saw that students would, if we gave them a YouTube link, they would totally get distracted on all the other YouTubes, right? Um, and so we embedded them in the, the slide deck. Um, and then the, um, if it was like a make activity or engineering, um, there was a makerspace embedded there. So um, that was, uh, and then each of them like they would, it would teach them how to do Google Slides, how to create a commercial with Flipgrid. Um, there was a lot, Google Drawings posters, uh, there's so many different options and the students didn't have to do all those options. They could gravitate towards what they wanted to, to um, do. Um, and um, it was really gave, gave students a lot of choice, which was great. Um, we tied this in with Flipgrid. Um, Flipgrid, um, I'll talk to you a little bit more in a bit, but Flipgrid has been my savior because it's my way of keeping track of students uh, learning virtually and um, seeing their, uh, what they create and everything. So um, I'll show you a little bit of that, but um, this was um, technology for a green future. So again, if you have, if you click on this, um, it will give you a copy link so you can modify it for, you know, even if it's not fourth grade, if you are doing this for, you know, sixth grade, whatever it is um, that there's in this one, they're creating, um, they're building an eco-friendly kitchen. They're um, trying out making um, solar ovens and cooking s'mores on it. There's a lot of fun things there. 
And then unit six went uh, back to the literature, literacy um, focus of um, fairy tales and folk tales. And um, this was, I'm gonna click on it actually. This one we combined for second and third, um, but so many um, great activities for them here. This was the little magical room we made for them. Our, my students loved this. Um, but like this was a, a make challenge. So can you engineer a new way for Rapunzel to escape from her tower? So um, something we are constantly trying to do is, is not just have screen time when it's distance learning. We want them to do hands-on things like they did in the maker space. So um, that was a fun one there. This is continuing our coding. So um, code a fairy tale or folk tale using Scratch Junior. And on these TV screens and computers are tutorials teaching students, but also teachers or you know you if you don't know how to use it. And so even taking this professional development further, um, if you're interested in bringing ed tech and STEAM and STEM into your teaching and learning these things, you could really truly be a student and learn um, on here. So um, Scratch Junior is one of my favorite um, coding platforms for younger students. Um, it's a free iPad app. And so if you don't know it and you watch this and you learn it, you, you can really see like how you can use it with kinder through fifth grade. Um, uh, so that's one of the examples there, how you can um, learn along with um, students. Okay, let me close out these tabs. Okay. Awesome. Yes, yeah, Scratch. Um, I'm going to talk about Scratch. We use Scratch. That's Scratch Junior is a um, for usually for younger, but it's on the iPad. Also, we can do on the Chromebook too, and that teaches you that. Um, but Scratch, I'm going to get to that. Um, it's one of my faves. All right. So um, this is um, the one that I just we just put out um, Earth Science, um, and um, I just we put it on social media, and everyone is very excited about this because I really think that it, even if it doesn't go with your benchmark unit. Um, everyone should be teaching earth science, right? Um, and science. And so um, it makes it super easy. So um, this is a first grade example right here of um, a choice board. And then this one is unit two, Grand Canyon. They're learning about erosion. They're learning about weathering. Um, so this link, actually all the links go straight to here. So I'll actually just go through it this way. So this is the observing the sky. So first graders are, um, and notice it says preview in your copy. So your, your copy there and you can modify it. Um, so this was second grade, wind and water, learning about erosion, and then having all of the create and make activities. So they're uh, creating um, their own examples of erosion. Um, and this is third grade weather and climate preview and copy. Um, this is a little makerspace there. Um, the difference with this, the way I modified these makerspaces is not everything is clickable because we want them to focus on just the create challenge, not get distracted with clicking around. So it just, they read the whiteboard. There's um, the um, examples here um, and the tutorials and um, lots of choices there. Going on to fourth grade, we did um, a um, Earth's changes, so volcanoes and earthquakes, um, which really goes into um, the, what they're learning in their class. And that's the maker space there. Christine, um, Dr. Chen is asking if you have a math maker space. A math maker space? No, I do not. Although, um, I, I'll be honest, I think, you know how there's, we always talk about STEAM and science, technology, engineering, art. I got S-T-E-A down, but math is definitely, in my profession, I could definitely incorporate more. On the other STEAM decks that, that I first talked about, we had a whole math page, but um, although I, I mean, there is math in everything that we do, but not a specific math maker space. Although I'm motivated now, that's an interest. <laughs> 
Um, okay. Um, this is fifth grade earth science. Um, and then this was um, learning about water and our resources and how society, um, the, the needs of, of water. So that, that was earth science. Okay. And then I'm going to pause here. So that was um, focusing on our choice boards and maker spaces. Um, and then the another big facet of what we share and everything is um, our weekly at home steam challenges. So um, starting in August, every week we started putting these out and they were so successful because it got students hands on making. So this is an example here. It's um, called the candy grabber device and we did it right around Halloween. And it was a big thing, right? Like we needed to be able to safely grab candy. And, you know, um, so here's just uh, one of my student innovators um, that um, made a candy grabber. And so this is showing you how we, how I um, use Flipgrid to um, capture the learning at home. Okay, so this was a, he did this on Flipgrid and I downloaded the video. So here's an example here. Hi, my name is Kellen and this is my candy holder. It's really long. So you pull this, then it opens. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Trick or treat, trick or treat. Here we go. See, it works. Bye. Oh my goodness. I love seeing their creativity. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> it's quite impressive. Okay, let me get out of here. Hi, my name is Kellen, oh, push, pushing the and this is button here. There we go. Okay. All right. So if you click on that link here, we now have so 30. You pull this, oh, then it opens. Can you see it? Okay. Pause you, Kellen. Love you. Okay. Um, so we now have 30. Um, at home steam challenges. So um, if you, it started with building a makerspace. Um, so setting up a makerspace and all that is, is, um, you know, it could be a lawn and another laundry basket or a trash can where students would start putting recyclable materials, toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, you know, water bottles and putting them and finding a spot to put those recyclables so that when it's time to create or there's a new challenge, they have materials. Um, so this is, oh, maybe someone needs to mute I thought that was my Kellen again talking. <laughs> um, so if you click right here, it goes to make a copy and you can uh, make a copy uh, um, of it. So this, we had um, engineer catapults. We had, um, I am I'm an elementary teacher at heart, so I'm very thematic. So uh, when it was October, we had some October theme um, ones when we got into fall. Um, then when we got into winter, we had design um, uh, our life size igloo challenge and just so many cool ones. And we had um, during Valentine's, we had paper engineering. Um, we had a Groundhog Day shadow uh, one that was fun. So um, all of these you can have and make a copy. And when it comes time to around that holiday or that theme, you have a hands-on STEAM um, activity. So then we got into Read, read Across America. Um, so we had a Dr. Seuss Ublick goop um, on one, and then um, rainbow challenge, and then last week we had our Earth Day uh, challenge, um, which was fun. So um, definitely, I, I think that we've done a lot, um, a lot, a lot um, this last year. But I these are kind of one of my faves because it really can. It, you can see so much creativity in students when I mean, you just give them the challenge and then see what they come up with. So definitely bookmark that and check that out. Um, also, uh, something I really uh, love about this is that um, I missed students being designed because in the makerspace they would have design teams um, and they each had their roles and it was like real life when you have a team of innovators and you have to work together for a problem. Um, and so um, it was fun to see um, how siblings um, like a first grader could be working with their fifth grade sibling on the same challenge and then learning from each other. So that was kind of one of the um, side effects um, that was cool. 
Um, and I also used, again, Flipgrid to um, see their creations. I also would be able to take a, a download their uh, a picture of them with their photo so I could share it on our uh, social media um, for our school, because um, that's, I do that as well. So, because I'm big about opening up the classroom walls or virtual even and sharing this awesome stuff that students are doing. Um, so that was kind of my tricky way of um, capturing their learning at home. Hi, my name is Kellen. Right, Kellen. In this okay. All right, I'm gonna pause, check things out. All right, I think we're good, okay. All right, so for um, my, um, for the attendees that maybe aren't K-5, maybe they're um, secondary, um, these are some of the, I believe all of those things can either be modified or spark ideas, hopefully. Um, but um, this definitely goes um, into um, something you could use K through eight. So um, this is called um, uh, Digital Choice Words, Show What You Know. Um, this is, um, you can click here and there's a copy. Um, but what this is, is um, I believe that when um, a student, when students finish up a topic or they've learned about something, to give them choices in how they show their learning, okay? Um, so um, it also is kind of their, I call it their tool belt. Um, that's why I put the little tool right here because um, they, if they know how to do right, use Write Reader, and then they've learned how to go, do Google Sites presentations, and they've learned how to do, create an awesome infographic in Google Drawings, they should be able to use those tools um, to show what they know. Um, so the way that this, this choice board works is um, it goes from, so there's Build It, Google Apps, you know, goes through all of those, but it also gets um, kind of more complex this way. Um, but each of these um, will show you, actually, sorry, um, I'm going to click here. Uh, one, I'm okay, so this is your uh, choice board here. And on, I'll go to one that's done. On the choice board, if they decide they want to do Scratch Junior coding, okay, or they want to do uh, co spaces and learn how to code, there's video tutorials um, on there. Um, this is another opportunity for you to learn if you want to know about co spaces or um, Scratch or anything like that. Um, you can learn as like your students. So um, this is the version number two is with student tutorials, and that is um, very uh, has it's you could be using it all year long. Um, and then okay. one thing that I put on here is sometimes too much choice. I'm sorry, can I just oh, interrupt you for one second? Because yes. I get you host privileges. Can you um, uh -huh. host everyone? <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a, I can't, I don't have, I don't have the host privilege anymore. So oh, mute everyone. <laughs> okay, hold on. Sorry. Wait, I'm, it says mute me, but I can't mute all. Yeah, I'm sorry. You sit all, All right, everybody <laughs> mute yourselves. Um, Dr. Wood, it's weird yeah. because when I do, I should have a Okay, I'm gonna reclaim, oh wait. Uh, yeah, you know. Okay, never mind. I think I've got, I think I've got it. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Go oh, ahead. it's real, it's the real world. This is what happens, it's totally. <laughs> Okay. All right. We're in business. <laughs> okay. So you're good. Okay. Awesome. All right. Perfect. Um, uh, Sarah, did you say you used Flipgrid to make those interactive pages? Um, no, I'm going to talk to you about Flipgrid. Um, it's actually the, the Flipgrid is how the students showed their learning. Um, so they would record their video. So I'll definitely go uh, more in depth um, uh, when it's uh, when I talk about Flipgrid. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Um, so this, so I was saying that um, sometimes too much choice is too much, um, as also depending on the grade level. Um, maybe they're not ready for all of this. So I have this lock here that teachers can drag over the options they don't want students to use, maybe because it doesn't, they're not at that point yet in their um, learning, or maybe they, um, they, it's not applicable to what they're showing their learning. So if they've just learned about um, simplifying fractions, 
maybe not a book about it, right? But, so, but a Screencastify would work or a Flipgrid would work. So you can use those locks. So this is something that you can modify for your instruction. Um, and, um, you know, even you could just take one copy of the, the page right here and just send it out to your students uh, one at a time. And then by the end of the year, they've had all these tools in their tool belt and then they can really, um, you know, uh, use those choices to show their learning. Um, and so that's where I'm at the, at this point. Um, my students have learned so much this year, different platforms, and now um, I give them the choice. So I have some students coding in Scratch. I have some students creating amazing infographics. Um, I have some students creating um, digital books and um, they really value that um, choice. Um, and you're gonna get much better product out of your students as well. If they, and also <laughs> you don't want to watch a lot of Google Slides presentations, right? Like that's boring as a teacher, right? So giving them that, you know, kind of letting them show their genius and where they gravitate towards, I highly, highly recommend that. Even if you just give them three choices, um, I think it's beneficial. Um, and with that said, here is um, the Celebrate um, Computer Science. Um, in December, it's every year, it's um, Hour of Code Week, Computer Science Education Week. And so I made this to, um, to celebrate that, but not only that, I wanted it to be, we wanted to continue computer science even virtually. And again, you can use this in person or hybrid or wherever. So I'm going to actually dive into this um, because um, I just, I really, this is one of my favorite things here. Uh, let me go to, I'm going to go ahead and click on the preview copy. It does take a second. Okay. So this is um, the coding videos and tools. So I wanted them to, there are so many great videos on code.org and um, other places here that teach about computer science and about the whole process. So um, uh, these are uh, videos that they could watch. And then there was a let's code option here. Um, so this is starting with beginning coding. So my K ones are gonna be more around here. Um, and then this is more advanced. So for secondary teachers, these are going to be more of the, um, the higher level, although it's really, truly, they all have um, great opportunities for any grade. Um, and so these were, if you click on the link here, it'll take you, that's Marla, that's my uh, buddy Marla. Um, it takes you to um, a video tutorial and then it gives you um, some apps to, to code. And then you click back on here and then let's go to Scratch because we were talking about Scratch. Where's my Scratch? Um, I, what I use for my K5 is something called Google CS First, um, Google uh, Computer Science. Um, because um, students under 13 should not, um, they can't have their own Scratch accounts or they shouldn't. <laughs> um, so um, through Google CS First, um, they actually teach them how to code using Scratch with videos. It's amazing. And if you're interested in Scratch and then you want to use it with your, your students, I highly suggest um, you looking into this and Google CS First. Um, I just um, am doing that with my third, fourth, and fifth graders, and they're um, turning in their projects, and it's amazing. They're um, showing their understanding of green technology. Um, in third grade, they're, um, the teachers wanted to give them choices, so some of them are showing their multiplication strategies. Um, some of them are um, summarizing a chapter in the book Tornado. Um, so. And our fifth graders are um, showing their understanding of colonies um, by coding in Scratch. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, but first they had to kind of learn how to, to do that. And so any of these, um, these courses here teaches them how to make a sprite, make them move, add dialogue and all of that. Um, so it's really a great uh, uh, stepping stone into Scratch. Um, and uh, they just added the integration of Google Classroom. So you can easily add your students into Google CS first. So check that out. Um, so that's our uh, computer science uh, choice board. Um, and let me go back over here. Um, again, you can make a copy and modify that, okay? Um, 
Um, let me check here. How are we doing? Okay, cool. All right. So all those lessons, how did I uh, organize um, all of this for all my K-5 students? Um, we have um, a lot of students at Double Peak. So how did I organize it, send it out virtually? Um, and then how did I celebrate their work? So um, this is, um, I'm not gonna uh, press play on these videos. If you're interested in this, uh, please come back to it and watch. Um, but it really showed how I um, separated the innovation Google Classroom. So I had a double peak first grade innovation Google Classroom and all first graders were there. Um, and then how I organized it by topics. I added emojis for my you know, students to you know, um, spark their engagement and help my littles as well navigate through Google Classroom because I got my kindergartners. Um, used to Google Classroom, um, as well as the teachers. Um, and then I had um, the grade level teachers be collaborators on there. So they were able to um, see their students work. And then if the teacher wanted to repost what I created into their individual Google Classrooms, they did that. So that video explains that. And this is um, Flipgrid. Um, and actually, I am going to press play on this because uh, someone uh, expressed interest with Flipgrid. And if you don't know about Flipgrid, um, I want you to know about Flipgrid because um, it is it has saved me and so many educators um, during virtual learning. But even if we're in person, it is the most amazing free tool because Microsoft bought Flipgrid. Um, and I actually, uh, Flipgrid sent me a shirt. I should be wearing it. That's how much I love Flipgrid. So I have to show you this video. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So here's Flipgrid. Um, I'm going to talk to you about, or it's going to talk about organizing by topics, video reflection, multiple ways to record, and then how I use the photos there to sneak, to grab pictures of them on there. So let me go ahead and share. Oh, actually, I forgot. I'm, I'm uh, narrating. Okay, so this is an example. Let me go back here. Okay, so this is uh, topics. Okay, so you'll see all my topics. This was way back if you saw the topics I have now. Uh, but um, for each topic, so that's the umbrella is the topic. Okay, um, students can respond to them. So this is when I put, you know, the uh, weekly or the STEAM challenge, Turkey Transporter. Um, they, I created the topic and then um, it, they, the responses started rolling in. So let me show you. So this is how you can make them active or hidden. Like I was done with those, so I didn't want them to access it. So you can change that. And then this is the kind of that tells you the challenge. I always add a picture or image, especially for my younger students. You can also add um, on the actual challenges. I add my video or my um, audio um, so they can hear my voice and they can, I can navigate through that. And then you can see um, I like to moderate um, the responses. So these are active so they can actually see those. Um, I need to watch, it actually keeps me accountable too so I can make sure I see everyone's. So I can uh, watch it and then when I watch it and I okay it and I make sure it's appropriate to put on a, a platform like this um, and they're not goofing around because sometimes they do, then you can um, click on active. And then if you click here, this is what it looks like to students. Um, I do put a password on there and they all know it. Okay, so you can add in Flipgrid, you, there's, you can add GIFs, um, you can add um, YouTube videos, you can add just pictures. This is a link to my challenge here, okay. And then you'll see my sweet little innovators here. See this example of how I tell them to take a picture with their creation, so then I can download the, the picture. You see siblings working together, it's pretty cool. Okay, so that is an example of Flipgrid. Um, and so let me get out of here. I keep pressing the wrong keyboard escape. Okay, there we go. Um, and so that is um, definitely if you're if if you haven't used Flipgrid, check it out. Um, and then I also use um, Padlet, which is another way to organize work. Okay. All right. And then 
Um, I did do, I needed, I'm not going to say that everyone participated. There are some, and if you were part of, you know, online teaching um, as a teacher or student teacher or aide or whatever, you know that not everyone participated in um, everything and all the specials and everything. So um, even though my innovators love innovation, um, I never had 100% just because of virtual learning and that's just the way it is so i had to figure out okay I, how can i celebrate their work um, and get them excited so here is um digital stickers um that i made and you can make a copy um of them um and that's kind of how they had a digital sticker book and um i could motivate them that way um so that's there okay so i'm gonna pause check in kevin you're at seas awesome Yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, I have to give a shout out. My bestie, my best friend is um, Mara McLeod, Mrs. McLeod. <laughs> oh, she's very nice. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. How do you class, how do you class manage with technology and websites? Do you want to um, expand on that and, and uh, let me know what you're thinking? Was it? Hi, yeah, good morning. Um, so I was wondering with the technology and the resources, um, I'm just kind of thinking based on my experience in like student teaching, um, I guess like managing the kids on the websites and the resources, like uh, it being more of a, a way for them to explore, but how, uh, or for, an ex for example, one of the activities that I, I personally did was Jamboard. Yeah. And a lot of the kids were like scribbling on it and uh, they got really excited. So like, I, I guess what I'm asking is how would you manage letting the kids know that the resources are there to help them instead, if that makes sense. I love that. Hold on, let me, let me stop sharing here and let's look. Okay. Um, that's a great, great, a great question. First of all, let me guess what grade is it younger or actually it doesn't matter. It could be fifth graders, right? Um, third, third, third with the yeah. board, yeah. They were very excited. Uh, third grade, grade. That's what I taught before, uh, before this. I love third grade. Um, okay, so with everything that I um, put out, a new platform, um, if it's Scratch or CoSpaces or Jamboard or whatever it is, I highly recommend letting them do that. Let them have fun and explore let them you know figure things out and i'm this is um uh we're more hybrid going back in person so i'm talking in person as well um if you're teaching them google slides presentations don't give them content right away let them make an all about me their favorite things let them you know kind of do what what the interests them first um, and so um, I think with the with the jam boards, I, I, I'm even thinking with virtual, like how how much did we need to teach them about Zoom? And you know, most teachers blocked the chat um, for like I'm just talking for my first graders. Um, so um, when I still meet virtually um, with my um, on Zoom, especially with my first graders. Um, I let them chat and this is 100 students if they're with me right now did you did I need to teach them how to chat appropriately yes like did I need to teach them how to do that yes and we would have constant conversations and then I would go on there and I would do something like blah, 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 you know put all these letters and exclamation marks and everything and then I gave them like some checks all right everybody give me a thumbs up if that's okay or a thumbs down if that's called spamming we don't like that we don't want to look at that right so just doing things like that um but um I you definitely there's other things like if you're doing virtual there's um and now I'm not going to remember it um there's and if you remember it, tell me in the chat. Um, it's a platform that where you can see where they're what they're all doing on online. Anybody help me? Relay, class relay. Um, but there's a program where you can see where your students are. And my teachers, even if they're teaching hybrid and the students are at home asynchronous, they're on class relay and they can see, oh, they're not on this, they're on YouTube, right? Um, and so conversations with your class and then conversations with sometimes your parents, like, hey, just let you know that, you know. Um, and then also going back to what, um, when I was sharing about YouTube, when I, when I would add links to the makerspace, I learned that I don't wanna just give them a YouTube link. 
I want to give them a um, link within um, Google Slides, okay? And also, I'm going to show you this, actually. This is a, a fun trick. I don't know if everyone knows it, but it's been my, my savior here. Um, let me go back here. Now I'm all messed up. I have so many screens. Okay, computer to desktop to share. Nope, that's you. Hold on. <laughs> okay. I'm known for lots of tabs. There we go. Okay. If you go to YouTube, and I would not do this with your class and just go to random YouTube <laughs> while you're live with lots of people, but. Um, Oh, good. It goes to Science Buddies, one of my favorite, which actually is a perfect segue because I'm going to talk to you about my some of my favorite STEAM resources. Um, say you want this uh, link right here. Okay. If you take the YouTube right here, you're going to copy that link. Go to a new tab and then see where it's actually, no, you could just do it right here, actually. See where right after the T, my screen is blurry here. Am I right after the T? Yeah, put a dash, okay? And what that does, it's called no cookies and it just gives them that YouTube. None of the stuff on the sides, none of that distracting stuff. So from now on, once I learned that fun little trick, um, I just give them those YouTubes because um, it doesn't go anywhere else. So that's just one other thing that I've done. Did that answer your question a little bit? Yes, yes, it did. Thank you. Yeah, I was just wondering if like, for example, as well, um, would you or have you ever taken away like websites or resources that the kids like as not like punishment, but more kind of like, okay, if you don't know how to use it, um, we'll come back to it. Um, or if they were using it inappropriately or stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Yes, that's all in your classroom management. Absolutely. Um, you, you know, if, if you don't know how to use it, then we're not going to use it. And then they see their other friends that can use it. Um, and even, like I said, get parents involved. If they've given them many, many reminders and they can't, then, um, then you give them other options. So yeah, definitely. Great Thank question. You. Thank you. Okay, so we are going into um, the uh, workshop time in, a, in just a moment. So I'm gonna show you these next couple of things. All of these are links. Um, these are my go-to when I'm building and creating um, STEM and STEAM type of activities. These are not only what I use, but they are so just kind of my top face. okay? So all of these are links and so, I would suggest you uh, checking those out um, and seeing, um, you know, what um, ties into your content, your grade level, um, and just bookmarking that, okay? And then the next thing I want to share is something that I highly, highly suggest is, um, is making your own uh, PLN, Professional Learning Network. Um, I would not be the educator that I am without following and collaborating with my PLN. Um, and so I wanted to give you a head start. These are some of my Instagram um, uh, kind of people um, that I collaborate with a lot um, and that they, there's such great STEM um, examples. And um, so these are all linked here. And then Twitter's a different animal. Um, I do both um, and they both have their um, differences. Um, these are um, the Twitter um, must follows, um, but um, I really, I really do have a lot more. So if you go here, there's a steam list. So if you're interested in, um, in that, I highly suggest that. And um, I, I definitely, um, I'm going to come back to the questions and I'm going to just show you uh, workshop time. Um, I'm going to skip down here. I highly suggest if you have not joined um, Instagram professionally, 
but more importantly, Twitter. Like if you want to choose between the two, um, you know, a Twitter, I would say, um, or actually you choose, but I highly suggest you um, joining those because um, I call it better together. Um, I say it all the time um, that we are better together. And there's so many teachers that are giving things freely, especially this last year um, uh, when we've all had to just, you know, work together to try and um, continue um, the things that we're doing with our students. So um, that's kind of, you can find inspiration there and um, you can check out the STEAM resources I just showed you. Um, you can go back to all those lessons and decide which ones you want to save um, um, to your own drive. Um, you can, um, if you've got any ideas, you can start creating. Um, I'm here for questions um, and I will be here um, until the very last one of you are, are gone. Um, well, I'll be here until noon if, if needed. So um, I just want to make sure that there's not any questions or if you um, want to you know, check any of those out, that is what our workshop time is. Okay, so let me go ahead and make sure if you don't have this presentation, make sure you do um, because like I said, it has everything there. Um, what do we think, Dr. Wood? Good. I think we're oh. good. Um, Stephanie did have some a question about any Spanish resources. There's yes. Okay. I'm excited only because my awesome district. Um, I don't have a lot, but uh, my district um, in the spring last year, um, they did this for us. So let's go back to. at the very beginning where we were at these resources. All of these are in Spanish. There's a Spanish version. So um, if you click here, this is actually where they are all housed. So I hope, now I'm thinking where, okay. Stephanie, stay with me because I'll look because I guess I didn't put the Spanish versions, which I am going to totally fix because that was like gold that someone did that for all, all of these were all translated in Spanish. So um, I definitely need to put that on there. Um, I know it's on my Twitter, but that's kind of hard to find. So I can, um, I can give that to you um, and definitely add that on there. Okay, so that's the only that that was my our only opportunity um, to do that. Um, I don't know if they would be able to keep up with that, and they didn't offer to do it that this year, um, just because they the translators were crazy busy with everything else. So I'm sorry, that's all I have, but at least I have a little bit, right? <laughs> you. And Sarah is wondering if you made the choice boards on Google Slides. Yes, yes, um, I have totally geeked out on using Google Slides. Um, and I actually have another presentation that I did with uh, for Dr. Wood and um, Meryl um, in, when was it, November? September. It was called uh, virtual, uh, basically Bitmoji Classroom. It's a virtual classrooms and how I designed them. And there's some um, kind of uh, some of my tips and tricks on how to make it. So if you're interested, um, I could put that in the chat. Yes, and though those resources are also on the Art Equals Opportunity website under professional development. So I'll Perfect. grab those. Unless Nancy, are you on? Can you grab the link for that? <laughs> you know what? I'll, I can find it very quickly unless you want them to go to there. Yeah, let me, I'll just put it in there. Okay. What else? What else? Anybody have questions? Oh, you got it. Okay. All right. So sp please spend the time. Um, I'm, I'll mute myself and let you guys work. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be checking the, the chat. Um, you can direct message me or you can uh, send it to the whole group and I will be here for you. Um, but definitely let me know if you need anything. Otherwise, spend this time or if you feel like you got everything, um go enjoy the oh yes please 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 give feedback okay i am huge on feedback i want to hear from you um and i know that um they want they need that feedback too so if before you get off can you please make sure you fill out the survey 
And then if you don't need me and you got all that and you want to just digest it another time, feel free to go start your Saturday. And I really appreciate you all for being here. Yeah, so if we can just give a round of applause for Christine. Thank you so much for all these amazing resources. Um, like I said, I cannot believe the hours and hours and hours um, Christine and Marla have put into all this work and they are so willing to share. And I do want to give a shout out for that hashtag, Better Together. Christine and Marla live that. And as educators, you all know how difficult it is to um, create stuff and how much time things take. So we are so appreciative. I'm going to keep putting that Qualtrics survey in the chat. Please fill that out. Um, and Christine, thank you so much for your time today. We are so, so grateful. Thank you so much. Again, it's my, my honor, my privilege. And um, just a quick little, the better together. Uh, and like I said, all those people on Instagram and Twitter um, share things freely. So don't ever go straight to Teachers Pay Teachers. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Teachers Pay Teachers. I love Teachers Pay Teachers. I've gotten things from there, but there are so many, there's kind of like a shift now in education. Uh, at least in my world of STEM, that people are sharing things. So please don't spend all of your um, your money and time looking on, on that because um, reach out and ask. Even if you put it on Twitter and say, hey, I'm looking for this resource and put the hashtag um, STEAM, STEM, Maker Ed, you know, people will respond and give you so many ideas. That's how I've, I've done everything, really. So thank you, thank you. I, I um, I have a quick question. I know you, your base is Double Peak School. That's wonderful. Do you happen to know other schools, particularly in the North County, their maker space and, and how the, the resources, the supports for teachers to integrate STEAM in curriculum? Yes. And I, I, you've visited us more than once, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. So, here are my mentor schools when I got to, you know, search around and not saying that this, these are the only schools. These are just the mentor schools that helped me build my program. Um, Vita, um, the Vista Innovation Design Academy in Vista is um, with um, Eric Shigala, the principal is amazing. I didn't even know what a makerspace was before I visited him and them. Um, I, um, I also, fun fact, went to, it, they, it used to be Washington Middle School back in the day. So um, it was cool to see that. So um, definitely Eric Shigala, C-H-A-G-A-L-A, -A -A, um, is a great um, maker um, resource. Um, Another uh, place I visited um, was um, in Escondido Quantum Academy, and that was when Joanne Fox, which is one of my amazing mentors, she's on the list too on Twitter, um, she, they um, helped me um, see how innovation can happen with the makerspace and everything. Um, not necessarily, they don't specifically have a, no, they did have a makerspace actually, yeah, so that, those two, um, Casita um, with Jenny um, in Vista is um, a great um, resource that I learned a lot. Um, and there's so many more, um, really. Um, we used to have a, it's called, it was called the North County, what was it called? Dr. Wood, if you could, do you remember what it was called? The, um, I was part of the North County Maker, but it was a bunch of teachers in the North County maker spaces. I forget what it's called, but it kind of stopped um, with that. But I don't know, I'm forgetting yeah, it what it was called. It was but. an alliance. I remember they were meeting every like Monday or something like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maker Mondays. Yeah. Maker Mondays. Yeah. Um, but if I think of any more, I can uh, definitely send your way. Thank you so much. And I really enjoyed this presentation and all the resources. Thank you so, so much. Yay, Christina, that's awesome. So you have you have benchmark, Christina? Yeah, we're just wrapping up our unit on, what are we doing? I don't know, I'm, I'm blinking out, but our next unit is like volcanoes and earthquakes. Yay. So, yeah, I'm excited. Okay, where are you at? La Mirada. Where? La Mirada? Yeah, I'm a student teacher. Okay, La Mirada. Uh, is she fifth grade or fourth grade? Fourth grade, um, Andrea Barfield. That's my CT. That's my sister. Oh my gosh, wait, this all makes sense now because she <laughs> but you have a last name so I didn't put it together, but how funny. 
I know. Yes. That's, that's my, my big sis. Yes. So you have a great teacher to <laughs> cool. well, yeah, tell her she knows my stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure she does. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Yes, Leah, they, that's a great resource too. Okay, and Sarah got the answer. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> if Kaylee's on here, uh, TikTok, yes. Is Kaylee on here? I have to tell, if she's on here, you need to unmute, I wanna say this. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Kaylee, it took me a long time for TikTok, okay, as an educator. Um, and I feel like I'm pretty like ahead of the curve um, as far as being innovative and everything. But TikTok, it took me a while, probably because my fifth grade daughter is like, thinks that TikTok is like, you know. But yes, TikTok, I finally like joined it and tried to filter out all the other stuff that I didn't want to see. I just want to see educators. And there are educators sharing tips. And I swear, I think I got that uh, tip on YouTube or about YouTube on TikTok. So if you're willing to dive in or to, to dive into that rabbit hole of TikTok, that's a good resource too. <laughs> yes, you have to get through the algorithm and keep liking and favoriting teacher TikToks it's called Teacher Talk. Yes. Um, but there's a lot of really great tips and educators and you can add, you know, all your favorite ones to your favorites, um, I on there to, and you I can access them whenever to do you that. Want. Definitely. But yes, thank you. Thank you. I even, I even made, I had to, I needed to make, I'm really into Instagram reels cause they're just so much fun for making my videos. And then I, I needed to, to do a longer reel. So I tried making a TikTok. And I just need more time in my life, <laughs> but it's definitely fun. Uh, Taylor, so the digital stickers and books are made with Slides Mania. Um, uh, Slides Mania, I usually just modify it. Um, that is, oh, I forgot, I needed to put that, the, uh, oh no, we put the other presentation in there. Slides Mania is amazing. Again, giving things freely um, and you can start with that. So I did do the Slides Mania template for the digital sticker book. And then um, they, the collection or their stickers can be shared through a lot of different ways. You can email them if you are, have just a small class, that's easy. You can um, put it in Google Classroom if you have Google Classroom and you can have them all their digital sticker books in one assignment. And then you could just quickly access the, their slide and put that in. I like them to add the uh, sticker on their own because that's kind of part of the fun. Um, so I would put that in a, um, in a comment. So there's so many different ways to do it, it's up to you. All right, Ricky, I love that. So how do we display student teamwork for peers to admire when um, things are virtual? Um, I kind of brushed over, so Flipgrid, yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, one other thing about Flipgrid, Flipgrid. <laughs> you could what? see you can you can click on different peoples on Flipgrid, but um, yeah, like other things you can't, you know. So, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Ricky, have you tried using? Um, so this is just virtual, but I just want to make sure you know if you use Flipgrid, all the student responses are there, and through admin, the admin tool, there is one button and it says print QR codes. Have you seen that or use that? No. Okay. So this wouldn't work virtually, but it is amazing. It's like one button, you click the uh, QR codes, you can print them out. It has the name, so it would, it's Ricky Ruiz. It would have your Flipgrid QR code. It would have your student name, Ricky Ruiz, right? Then you can cut them out and you can slap them on any student work, okay? And that means you can, so even going home. And so the parents um, or anyone visiting your classroom, if it's on your board, you can um, scan it and it, the video pops up. And even more, in, if you have the Flipgrid app, it pops up in augmented reality. So like, here's the work 
I know this might not sound sound right, but if just try it. Here's the work, and then their video pops up on top of their work in augmented reality. It's super cool. So that's what's great. Um, have you tried Padlet? Just for assignments, you know, yeah. but not um, not them displaying things. Yeah, Padlet is so it's a digital sticky board, um, and um, that is very cool because they can add pictures, they can add their presentations. Um, they so much that they could do. Um, and there's also um, um, I, I use ThingLink, um, but for virtually. Uh, I also, if you use some teachers use class dojo which is a very if you're are you k5 or interested in k5 yeah have you seen have you heard of class dojo and i'm not talking about the behavior part of it at all have you seen the stories <laughs> no i haven't seen that <laughs> yeah so class dojo is consider it um and it's free consider it um this class dojo stories it's like an instagram for your class so you can snap a picture of their work and then the feed goes to all of the parents, but it also can just go to the parent. So if you don't want to put it to the whole class, like Flipgrid is, you see everybody's, right? If you just want to send it to, um, to you know, my daughter's Avery Dixon's family, you just quickly take the picture and you click on Avery Dixon and it just goes to me, her parents. Um, so that's a that's a really good one, Class Dojo. And Class Dojo is a behavior management. There's a part of that too, where you can give them points and stuff like that. Um, me personally, I just love the stories part of it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, Dr. Wood, you're awesome. Oh yes, Denise, the conundrum activities. Yeah, they're gonna, it's it's kind of like how I, I consider Flipgrid. It just keeps getting better and better, Class Dojo. There's so many ready to go things. Oh, and Seesaw as well. Seesaw is something very similar to Class Dojo um, stories where you can share student work and it works perfectly in a digital world. Digital world. Because the students can um, upload their work to their portfolio so um, that's what my daughter who uses Seesaw does. Um, she, whenever she's done with something, like she's proud of something, she can put it to her portfolio. And the portfolio also is shared with the, the parents. All right. So I just want everyone to know what I will do is put together a Google Doc of um, the Weebly, uh, Christine's Weebly site and the slide she shared today as well as, well as the um, recording of today's event. So if you want to go back to it and rewatch parts of it, you'll be able to do that. And then um, it will be up on the Arts Equals Opportunity website within the week or so. Um, so you will always have those resources available on the web. You know, um, we're trying to make it very user friendly for you all. Um, so, um, I know it's workshop time, so I just, but I just wanted to be, for those of you who remain, I just wanted to let you know that those resources will be coming at you the, by Monday. So again, if you don't have anything else for Christine, you are free to go. Thank you all so much for attending today. We really appreciate you learning so you can take it back to students. Oh, the science resources in Spanish, Christine.
And you could always send those to me, Christine, too. I can put them on the Google, um, the sheet that I'll do. Yeah, I think that um, I, it will take a little bit to find them. And again, I'm so, if, if that person is still here, I'm, I think it was Stephanie. I'm so grateful because I need to have that on my blog. So yeah, um, yeah let's go ahead and I'll find all those um, and we'll put that on there. Okay, sounds great. Thank you for the thank you for the great online resources. You're welcome. Thanks, Norma. It's in, they're incredible, and I'm definitely going to be using them on yeah. on incorporating them with, in my teaching because my kinder's teacher was using the the uh, she was actually using your the make maker space, uh -huh. and I thought it was incredible, Yay. and that was her kinder. And um, um, and I was just very impressed, and I thank you again. I really appreciate it because this is an incredible resource. Norma, where are you at? I'm in uh, San Diego, Pauleki, Pauleki Central, in Encinitas. Oh my gosh! Awesome! Thanks for being here, Norma. Oh, thank you so much. All right, I'll see Bye. you, ladies. Bye. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Well, great job, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I wanted to ask you, are you are you here locally right now? I am.